APC Congress is to hold despite opposition from factions, says Governor Abdullahi Ganduje of Kanu State. And the Nigerian military says Abu Musab al Balnawi, leader of Islamic State group ISWAP, is dead. This is Plus Politics, and I am Mary Anna Cole. APC state congresses will take place all over Nigeria soon. In fact, tomorrow, despite the conflicts within the party. Governor Abdullahi Ganduji of Kanu State has stated that the venture would hold as scheduled, notwithstanding a protest by the Joint Stakeholders Forum led by Senators Ibrahim Shekarao and Barao Jibril, along with four other members of the House of Representatives from his state. In readiness for the venture, a former Borunu State Governor Ali Modu Sheriff, who is aspiring for the national chairmanship of the party, has enjoined members to go out in their numbers to elect leaders of their choice in Saturday state congresses. Well, joining us to analyze that is uh, Biodum Shomi and Babashola Adebui, both are political analysts. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining us. Good evening. It's my pleasure. Thank you. All right. For inviting us. All right. Uh, I'm going to start with you, Mr. Shomi. It's interesting. Uh, the first questionable thing, um, you know, about the Congresses in itself is that there's been a committee that's been inaugurated by the APC at the national level. No chairmen have been named in these committees that have been inaugurated. Even other members for various states have not been named. So everybody's wondering, who are these people? How do we know who they are going forward? And Congresses are just by the corners tomorrow. Well, it's very important for the APC to have the state congress. One of the major problems they have uh, initially when they were choosing um, delegates is the fact that they are parallel congresses earlier on in some states. And therefore, that led to mutual suspicion. No one faction suspend, uh, sus uh, suspecting the other faction. Both factions are jostling to reposition themselves in order that uh, they can have an advantage over the other. So part of the strategy of managing, in my view, uh, managing the crisis within the APC currently is to ensure that the list of all those to conduct the, 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 the congresses are actually kept um, um, secret to avoid um, mutual suspicion or accusation against uh, the officials so that they don't end up finding themselves in another controversial situation. But that much said, it only tells a lot about the internal party democracy. You would expect that a ruling party like APC would be able to have its own congresses freely without uh, all these um, cat and mouse uh, game going on in the country. It underlines, you know, the desperation for power, you know, by different actors in the political party. So therefore, um, what, what, whichever way it is, the Congresses must hold, INEC must observe them, and then um, the leadership of the parties must emerge. Okay. Um, Mr. Debuy, James Akwanudo Idege, the um, spokesperson of the party, was quoted to say that the party expected bickering uh, to be nipped in the bud and that the party would move towards the 2023 elections as a unit. Now, they're saying that as a result of this committee that has been inaugurated, they're hoping that all the bickering and the infighting would be nipped in the bud. Um, and, that's, and they're saying that that's why, in his words, uh, these people who have been nominated or rather elected to be part of the committee um, are, have been fully picked based on, um, you know, their record, which they feel, um, you know, is qualified enough for them to be able to fill those seats. But then, if we look closer at what's happening across the country within the parties, can we really say that this committee, don't forget my opening question was the fact that nobody knows the names of the people who are on this committee. How do we put an end to the bickering if issues like these are still teething and they're stemming from the national? <coughs> well, um, from the past, 
Um, it has only been a case of the um, after the convention of the Congress, another committee will be set up for the conciliation purpose. So that means there is no there is nothing the political party or any political party will do to satisfy everybody. We need to remember that the convention of the Congress is the beginning of electioneering process for, uh, against 2023. So everyone who has aspiration for, um, for any position, we definitely look out for the person who to support, who he or she believes we uh, will be, uh, cover his own interest. So as a result, there will always be conflict. And regardless of what the committee, the board of trustees, or whosoever that is in charge of the Congress and Convention, that is what they do, um, that will always be an issue. However, the Congress will be coming up tomorrow across all the states, all the 36 states. Up to yesterday night, even up to this afternoon, which I'm not even sure, excuse me, which I'm not even sure of. Committee for each state congress, for each state, has not been announced. And if committee has not been announced, is that a sign of failure or there is a, there is a, plan, there is a plan going on on how to maneuver the congress so that it will suit a particular candidate or the other? So for now, I believe APC. I expected the PC to have gone beyond this level, but it has already shown the way they are ruling the country is also the way they are also uh, uh, paddling their own uh, political party. Um, back to you, uh, Mr. Shomi. We see that in Kanu, and especially in my opening, I did mention that uh, Dogwa is kicking against um, um, Shakarao and has declared loyalty to Governor Dan Gan uh, Ganduje. We also have seen that they seem to be going for a consensus candidate in Kanu State um, for their congresses, and they, re they say that they're returning former party executives unopposed. And so I'm wondering, how does this address internal party um, um, democracy? Because the APC seems to want to pride itself as the party to belong, even though we see a lot more people going to the APC. But of course, if we look closely through a, a, a microscope, we can see that maybe some of the reasons why, or majority of the reasons why these people are moving from their parties to the APC is because of similar problems. So where is the internal democracy in the APC? Yeah, and um, when you talk about internal party democracy, one of the there are other ways of uh, determining that. One is a level of involvement of all stakeholders um, in in the party, uh, particularly the membership of the party. Are they allowed to exercise their rights? Are they given opportunity to do so in terms of selecting, you know, electing their leaders? The other angle to it is the Chinese model of it, where you do a form of selection and then you ask for. Um, delegate gratification of, of, of those ones. So, which I think is what Gandhi is talking about, that, okay, look, we're going to have to return all the people in order to manage the crisis within the party and then ask uh, delegates to ratify. So, that is what Gandhi is trying to do in Kano. So, in terms of APC, um, whether they're doing selection process or they're doing ratification or consensus system, that is not against party democracy, as long as that is what the members of the party want. If that is not what they want, then uh, that will be strictly against uh, internal party democracy um, within the APC. But there is nothing to suggest currently that uh, members of the party are not embracing that. Should anybody kick against it, then the whole thing will be uh, open to question, the legitimacy of it, because otherwise it, it will be a solution imposed by the leadership in Canada. Um, but Mashallah, the, the candidates in the APC in Edo State um, has called on the Malaybuni leadership of the party at the national um, to stop the state from imminent, in his words, imminent political annihilation, saying that another crisis seems to be brewing within the party based on reported plans to impose state executives in tomorrow's Congress. Now, 
This is same for river states. Remember what happened last time that state congresses took place. We saw parallel congresses uh, um, in river states and, you know, the, um, the Minister for Transportation's faction versus the faction of the former Senator Magnus Abbey. And this is what the, the, the APC candidate, um, the, the candidates in Edo state is asking the national leader uh, to deal with. So again, um, how do these kinds of problems or how will these kinds of problems be, uh, you know, dealt with before tomorrow? Because <laughs> we're, less, we're less than 24 hours to tomorrow. Can any, any magic wand be, you know, tossed or somewhat something, can something be done to deal with this issue before tomorrow? Because I'm wondering how that will be an exercise that will favor everyone if this is what some people are suggesting. Yeah, I, like I made mention earlier, um, there is no way the political party can satisfy every candidate. However, if there is going to be anything that will happen between today and tomorrow, then there must be negotiation between all the all the uh, um, people joining for positions. In other words, there must have been an ag agreement among all of them. The faction A, faction B, faction C, faction, depending on the number of factions in that political party. That is the only way that can work. And they all agree on who to be the chairman for one faction, who to be the vice chairman, who to be the secretary across all the factions. And once you are able to do that, and everybody agrees to that, there will be peace. But if that has not been done, between now and before now, I doubt if that will be done by tomorrow, except except the uh, 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 except there is a magic that they are going to perform. And the only magic I can see they can perform is to assure the other party of a, of a political, uh, what's it called, the tickets in the next election. Mm. Like I may mention that everyone is now preparing for 2023. So everyone is now looking for opportunity to grab his own ticket against 2023 without any... A barrier from anybody in the state executive. And that is why all these issues are coming up now. I'm wondering, um, if, if we see that these negotiations don't take place, that you're hoping would take place between tonight and tomorrow, do we see a mass movement from the APC to maybe any other party after this Congress? Um, let's not forget, yesterday uh, we heard that there was a merger of sorts um, with smaller parties um, and this was spearheaded by Kingsley Mogalu. Don't forget, we also have the third force who we still do not know what they're about and if they're going to become a political party. But do we see mass movements again as a result of tomorrow's Congresses? It is not impossible. But for mass movement, it depends on who is moving out of APC. If the person is a very strong political uh, uh, person, in a politician in APC, and uh, has a lot of followers, then that could be mass movement. But if it's someone who is not that strong and is because of his uh, of his belief of being shitted and is moving out, the APC might not even feel that uh, is present. So it depends on the it depends on the strength of that party, of that person. However, moving to a political party is just an assurance being given to him in that other party of being recognized. Um, because what something I've realized about most politicians is number one. They seek power, fame, and recognition. And once they're able to get any or all of this through in any of the political party, then they are fine with it. So if there is going to be any mass movement tomorrow, maybe to APC, uh, sorry, maybe to PDP, maybe to uh, any other, uh, other political party, it all depends on the other political party that uh, welcoming them, that is ready to compromise its own structure to welcome them. Um. Mr. Shawumi, before I ask the question that I intended, intended to ask originally, I'm, tr I'm trying to understand how um, political parties work in Nigeria. They make promises to not be like the, the opposition when they are, uh, rather, when they are, the, the, the opposition is in power, they make promises that they will not make the same mistakes that the opposition 
which PDP now uh, is the opposition. But then, of course, when the APC started off, they did promise that the internal democracies and the politics within the party would be way better uh, for those who came on to their side of the divide. But we seem to see a lot of similarities between the two major political parties. And it makes me really wonder why they keep crisscrossing from party A to party B. Uh, you said the nature of political party is It's not only Nigeria, it's worldwide. They make promises which the electorates are expected to hold them onto. Uh, but in many cases, you see politicians breaking those promises. Those promises are not necessarily, you know, um, um, cast in iron stone. They are, there's nothing theological about it. They're just talking about possibilities of what they think they will do. And then if they fail to do that, it's up to the electorate, you know, to choose what to do at the next election. But more in Nigeria, it is more common that many politicians tend to totally abandon what they think their party stands for. This is simply because we do not have ideological parties in Nigeria currently. So therefore, many of the promises are just, you know, words of mouth. There is no ideological underpinning. There is no commitment to it. And eventually, uh, what you see is they easily teach these issues without showing any form of remorse, and they think it's, it's okay. You just go to the next um, election, again, you promise. Whether you are in opposition or you are the ruling party, and the approach has always been the same, because the, all the political parties in Nigeria are not, are, are not ideologically oriented. This is the major problem which we have. Whereas it is less in countries where you have ideological political parties. Let's come to Lagos. Um... In September of 2021, earlier this year, when they had uh, congresses, there were parallel congresses here in Lagos State, just like uh, we had in uh, River State. Uh, now, as the party gears up for tomorrow, there have also been speculations that there might still be um, parallel congresses because the, in, uh, the infightings within the party here in Lagos State has not been addressed. Um, with all those, the infighting that we're seeing, especially here in Lagos State, what does the future hold? Let's not forget, the Southwest is really angling for a ticket. Is this going to in any way affect that agitation? Well, in terms of Lagos, what you see going on in Lagos uh, actually played out at the last election. If you remember, they had parallel congresses and um, the so-called talk of factionalization. But eventually, it was um, the faction led by Tunde Balogun, you know, by the Tinubu faction that the national leadership ended up recognizing. So it's not something new. It has happened in Lagos uh, before. It will happen again. In Ogun, you have the same situation in Ogun at the last election. But the reverse was the case. A different faction was actually recognized, not even the ruling party uh, in the state's um, faction. So all these things tend to happen. At the end of tomorrow, we're going to likely going to see people kicking, saying, no, we don't agree with the outcome because they manage and all that. That's not unusual um, in, for politicians. They don't easily agree on a compromise and they don't easily agree on the choice of a particular candidate because everybody has their own peculiar interest, you know, ingrained in every election or a selection of ca um, candidates to rule the party. Mm. So this is the problem. We are likely going to see people kicking against the outcome in Lagos and possibly Ogutu. Hmm. Finally, Babashola, should the average Nigerian be looking elsewhere? I mean, and this is tied to the question I asked earlier on before my last question. If the two big wigs, the two major political parties seem to be, um, you know, churning out the same, same thing year in, year out, and we haven't seen any changes, we haven't also felt, uh, you know, a, a change of sorts in the way things have been done, should Nigerians be looking elsewhere? Don't forget, Professor um, Tahiru Jega, former INEC boss, had come out to say that Nigerians need to look away uh, and look beyond the APC and the PDP for, for them to get the kind of Nigeria that they're looking for. Uh, is that not a tad bit too late for us to be doing, or is this the best time to do so? It is not late. It's still the right time because Nigerians still have about uh, about 18 months before election. So I, I believe uh, looking elsewhere might not even solve the problem. It's, it's not about the party, it's about the individual. Just like we may mention the other time, 
Um, I, can, I can promise you everything because I believe that is what you want to hear for you to vote for me. So what Nigerians need to look for is to look out for the integrity of the people who are jostling for one position or the other against next and next election and vote for that person. It should not be about popularity. It should not be about, about the wealth of that person. It should not be about the influence of that person. But about what they believe that person can deliver in order to move this country forward. So it is not about looking elsewhere. It's about looking for the right candidate that fits that position that they are, are, are we are as, uh, expecting them to occupy in the next election. Either APC, PDP, ADC, YPP, it depends on the individual being elected to occupy that position and not the party. But integrity is key. Antecedent is key. Okay. And finally, Mr. Shoumi, just to add to what he said, can we find the integrity he's making reference to? to the, can we find the individuals that he's referring to uh, in any other political party? Or are these the same kinds of people who are running in the circles of all the political parties that we have in the country. Uh, and let's not forget that these individuals are from us. They are Nigerians. They're not from Mars, neither are they from Ethiopia. They are from Nigeria. Uh, so really, could this also be a reflection of who we are as people? Or maybe these politicians are caught from another cloth? Well, um, there are obviously many Nigerians who are credible, who can still, you know, provide the necessary leadership needed, you know, in the country. The problem is this. Will they be able to have access to political power? That is the major problem because the, those who pay the piper, they taste the tune. And many credible Nigerians are not the super rich. And therefore, that creates another major headache. You can have candidates with integrity in PDP, in APC, in all the political parties. Well, how would you be able to ensure that they attain the position of leadership? This is one of the reasons why I disagree um, um, with those who are suggesting that leadership alone is a problem. Leadership alone is not a problem. The structure is also the problem because when you create a, 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 a situation where you need millions, you must be a billionaire to be able to form a political party, then you've already created a barrier you know, towards integrity, having candidates with integrity, you know, with honor, you know, to, 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 to attain position of leadership. Because nobody will form a political party with billions and then hand it over to someone else. That is a problem which I think we face in the country. Hmm. Well, I want to say thank you, Baba Shaladegui, Shegu, Shoumi, uh, both our political analysts. Thank you for being part of this conversation. Uh, we'll watch out and see what plays out tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much for staying with us. We'll take a short break now. And when we return, the Nigerian military says Abu Musab al-Banawi, leader of the Islamic State group ISWAP, is dead. We'll be back shortly. Stay with us.